Hi, thanks for showing me. Uh, this is Chris Chen, a PhD from Iowa State University. Today, I'm going to present Log Extractor. This is a joint work with Chen Shi and my advisors, Professor Neil Zhenqiang-Gong and Professor Yongguan. The project is cooperated with NIST researchers, Barbara Goodman and James Lyle, and sponsored by NIST CSAF, Center for Statistics and Applications in Forensic Evidence. We propose log extractor as an automated approach for identifying and extracting digital evidence from Android log task corpus. Searching evidence in the text corpus is one of the most popular ways when forensic practitioners look into the mobile devices. According to our Droid, an Android app data flow analysis study in 2016, uh, by analyzing around 23,000 real world apps, it finds logging system is the primary place where apps save evidentiary data, such as GPS location, and network information. That is to say, when a forensic analyst investigates the mobile device, log message has the highest chance to contain the useful digital evidence. Here, let's work through this scenario of evidence identification from logs. First, the forensic investigator dumps the log from the suspect device by using tools such as Android Debug Bridge. Next, with the extracted log messages, the investigator can adapt software to search by keyword or regular expression to locate and retrieve the evidence. Following the affirmation introduced scenario, let's take a look at this piece of real world log message. If you were a forensic analyst working on this, how and how fast would you find the evidence from the log message? Well, probably you can come up with techniques such as keyword searching or regular expression mappings. But let's look at this closely again. Given that you find these are GPS coordinates, by which patterns would you use to parse this information? And imagine if there is no keywords like location show up, it will be more difficult to catch this part when dealing with the real world size log corpus, which is often more than 10,000 messages. Let me use this example to rephrase and motivate our research problems. Given that a forensic investigator wants to find the evidence from log message A and B, our first research problem, evidence identification problem, is to find which message contains the evidence. And if the answer is yes, what types of evidence they are. In this case, given that we find our message A contains the GPS latitude, to, what's the actual value it's supposed to be? Here, the evidence extraction problem comes, which targets at answering this kind of question. Using the affirmation example for message A, let's quickly go through the example to see how an ideal automation tool like log extractor should work for extracting the actual evidence on the log message body part, which is highlighted in orange. Later, we will repeat this example with more technical details. Given log extractor has the analysis result as the state diagram in the center, an input string at the bottom left. We work the state diagram based on the input character one by one and output the result at the bottom right. So here we place an um, automation to see the result. So as you can see, um, with such a state diagram, we can successfully extract the latitude value, which is 30.03 uh, from the input stream. Uh, our research purpose is to use log extractor to answer both evidence identification 
an extraction problem. We find that existing studies are limited at solving their specific domain problems, but cannot help us to solve evidence identification and extraction problem in Android logging system. For example, the Android app can analysis studies such as FlowDroid and JoySafe. As the right-hand side figure demonstrated, can only tell which type of data can be found and which category of sync, like the file system. Unfortunately, they do not support the output as details as the log message string patterns. On the other hand, string analysis studies like JSA and ViewList do not support string, do support string pattern analysis, but do not answer which piece inside the string patterns carries which type of evidence. Log parsers, unlike aforementioned approaches, implement the analysis based on the data mining, which builds their analysis logic on historical data. However, while it does use techniques like regular expression to catch frequently used evidence, it still lacks the ability to answer evidence extraction problem without keyword hints or manual operations. Therefore, we propose log extractor for solving our research problems. Before diving deep into the research details about how we build the automatic extraction tool, I would like to give a quick review on Android log message. As the example shown, a log message is composed by a timestamp, the process ID, the text ID, log level, log tag, and body message. While timestamp, process ID, and the task ID are determined by runtime, an Android app can decide the log level, tag, and body by selecting the corresponding API and variables. And here is our proposed scenario with the help from log extractor. After the forensic investigator obtains the log message from the suspect device, log extractor automatically identifies the uh, evidentiary log messages and extracts the evidence like GPS location as shown in the example. So now the problem is how to generate this kind of um, patterns. So next we will present how we generate the patterns here for matching and extracting the evidence. We propose to build app log evidence database in the offline phase by analyzing real world apps. Each entry in the database represents a log message pattern including the log level, the string patterns of log tag, and log body that may be written into the logging system during the runtime. The log string pattern is summarized as tainted DFA, which will be covered later. The workflow at the bottom demonstrates how we use this database to identify and match the evidence from log messages. to build the app log evidence database. As part of the log extractor, we propose to apply a composition of string and 10 analysis over Android app program code. That is, we analyze Android APK files collected from real world market, such as Google Play Store. Then for each logging system API that writes the log message, we output the log message patterns. So here, let's use a program code example to demonstrate this. Um, so first, we initialize, so as you can see in the line two, we initialize a, a string constant with our intent first. So here we have a variable uh, tracking the string variable L A T and hyphen. Then, we propagate it into the string buffer. So here is another variable with floating number string pattern and carrying the latitude type. Let's use the latitude with angle brackets to represent it. Then 
we combine them together and propagate the result to the output buffer. So that's the overview. And now let's, before moving to the tainted DFA, let's first look at uh, the DFA. So a DFA, a deterministic finite state automaton, uh, is, a functionality, is functionally equivalent to the regular expressions, like these two examples. When we match an input string with the DFA by working from a state to another state, one character is consumed from the input string. At the end, if one can reach the end state denoted by the double circle, such as S4 state, and the input string become empty, then we can conclude they are match. This is the tainted DFA representing the, our previous example. So as you can see, the left-hand side is the part for the constant stream, L, A, T, and hyphen. And the right-hand side is the floating number stream with evidence type latitude. So beside the DFA, we add a tent table for each state within the DFA to check evidence type propagation in the app program. In this example, any character being matched by the right-hand side will be a part of the latitude string output. So um, by using that um, tainted DFA, we uh, summarize there are three scenarios uh, when using the tainted DFA to extract the evidence string from the input. So note that uh, the, the evidence type is not necessary to be single type like the latitude that we previously demonstrated. This work can be also can also support the case when an input string carries multiple evidence types like the uh, text input or or the uh, unique identifier. Um, so when extracting the string, we keep tracking two pointers. One points to the current state after consuming an input character, while the other one points to the previous state. In this scenario, since we just move from a state without evidence to the one has certain evidence type, we initialize this output buffer. And following the previous one, if both pointers point to states with the same evidence type, we shall stop, we, we shall append the input character to the output. Uh, this, this scenario suggests that, so as you can see, so here the first one is the tainted one and the next one is the one without the tent, uh, which means the first one has the evidence type state, but then uh, the following one doesn't. So in this case suggests that um, the input character T3 should not be counted as the evidence string and we should stop the buffering and output the result. So let's wrap up the scenarios introduced earlier and work through this example again. So um, this is the example that we, uh, by analyzing the program code and we, so we get this tainted DFA. So if you remember it, uh, the left-hand side is the constant string and the right-hand side is the floating string uh, with the evidence type latitude. And Suppose we have an input string, like, like, like the button shown. So here, we start from the initial pointer. So next, since the, um, from the S26 to S27, there is a, a uppercase L. So that we consume um, character L and move to the next state. And since these two states are um, are the states without the evidence type, then this, this character should not be counted as any kind of evidence here. And next is the A and T and hyphen. So um, we move to the hyphen then, okay, this is the first scenario that we earlier proposed. So we move from a state uh, without the evidence type to a state with the latitude evidence type. So um, after consuming the hyphen character, we're supposed to initialize an output buffer 
and you can see it at the bottom, bottom right, like this. Then we, we consume uh, the number three. And since this is the scenario that two states have the same evidence type latitude, to, so number three should be counted as part of the uh, latitude to value here. So we keep appending the output from the input string. So until we reach the end state of this 20 DFA, and since you can see the input string here is empty. So which means we finish extraction and we can output this value um, as a result. So we evaluate a log extractor on both um, benchmark apps and real world apps. For benchmark apps, we use Troy Bench. Um, we count only the apps that are writing logging message only. And um, um, at the end, we found there are 65 apps. As you can see, the identification and extraction performance are quite well. There are some technical limitation deteriorates the performance like ICC flow. Um, it's a um, intercomponent communication uh, between the different Android component. And we inherited this limitation um, by the tool we use. Uh, flow joy to construct the code graph. And also um, there are other limitations like the implicit flows that are well-known challenges in tenant analysis. And also since we lake the precise string models of Java string libraries like uh, the formatter and matcher, some patterns are wrongly constructed. And the real world app evaluation is conducted over the, uh, 12,000 apps. We manually verify 91 apps and got similar performance report uh, like uh, benchmark apps. Um, there are two additional limitations found in the real world apps verification. One is the string model precision on two dimensional uh, data structures such as map. Um, and the other one is the any string DFA, which uh, for by any string, it means um, it's a regular expression you can, you can imagine this as a regular expression that can accept all the string. So uh, in this case, um, if there are uh, the API method that we, we fail to uh, assign a proper uh, string model, then um, it will deteriorate the performance because uh, then we uh, keep the system consistent and treating as any string model. And you can imagine that by, by this case, we will merge all evidence type together and, and output the result. So in this case, uh, uh, it will cause the false reports. And before concluding this study, I wish to use um, some real world log message that were found in our manual verification to highlight log extractor contribution to our research problems. These are the real world log message that carrying a GPS location data. As you may find, the first one looks straightforward and can be easily found given the searching keywords are correctly used. Next, we find a case where GPS coordinates appears without the keyword. However, due to the separator and their appearing sequence that related to, goes first, then longitude. We believe this may cause for the investigator extra effort to find, but it is, not in, uh, it is not impossible to find. So the most interesting one comes here, the next one. We also find um, a case where there's no keyword, no location like GPS, like latitude, there's nothing there, but just a comma. And, these are just comma separated string. And coordinates order do not appear as the other generally used patterns. Like you always goes with latitude and the longitude. So in this case, uh, the log extractor reports that actually the first one is the longitude, then it goes with latitude. So we believe um, it is very challenging for a uh, human investigator as well as other uh, existing uh, forensic analysis tools to determine the correct GPS coordinates from the log message. 
So and here, this is how uh, we introduced log extractor to play the, an important role when being used to automatically extract the evidence from the text stream. So to sum up our proposed framework, log extractor combines string and tenant analysis to build the app log evidence database. With that database, we present how to match and extract the digital evidence from the log message dumped from the suspect device. At the evaluation, evaluation part, we demonstrate how log extractor can help with retrieving um, the real world GPS location evidence, which human and existing software tools are limited to catch. In the future, we aim to keep improving the time and space efficiency when applying log extractor on analyzing real world apps. Also, we will work on extending our existing string analysis model by the one with higher precision. So thank you for joining um, this presentation again.